You are listening to Food for Worms, the original true grime podcast. Is that uh, is that just you? Did you make that up on the spot? I did, sir. I am sorry. What, what, what were the words? Bud. Did you were they were it you was, saying it bud? Was, it was butt. Oh, butt. But. <laughs> I thought but. you. Were, I thought you were. I thought you were serenading me. <laughs> I can. Let's start now. Yeah. What What are you gonna sing about? Sam, your thighs are out. They are. I'm wearing shorts. Just like the stars. <laughs> WrestleMania six. Wrestle you at six? WrestleMania six. What? Am I oh, st- Re- WrestleMania yeah, six. Did, did I not say that cr- clearly? I thought. It I, doesn't matter what you think because I love <laughs> you. And now we're starting the show. Dun 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 Welcome to Food Fireworms. That was dumb. I'm sorry. That was fucking amazing. Okay. You're listening to Food for Worms. My name is Sam, folks. My name is Deltron 4040. 4040. That would be your 4040. I'm his older brother. How was your day, bud? good um so i've had like some time off and it, it's been i've been super busy the entire time i've been off and mm-hmm. so i've been feeling fucking great working out in my yard uh going to the dog park with the pup mm-hmm. uh hanging with the kid like the the amount of time i've had with the child mm-hmm. is is um astronomically like way more than mm-hmm. i than i get on like the normal <laughs> basis when i'm when i'm working yeah and then like today was the most chill day i've had and then for some reason like I was in a funk for like an hour. Like, dude, you're not doing anything today, and that's just me. That's yeah. my like working drive, yeah. and I'm on vacation right now, yeah. and it's just like attacking me, being like, dude, what are you, what are you fucking doing? Yeah. Get up and get up and do something. Like, why isn't why isn't every waking hour of your day accounted for? Right, you piece of fucking shit. Right, <laughs> and then I went and like I, I ran a couple errands. I picked up some food, mm-hmm. and then um, and like I told Brooke, I was just like, I'm feeling goofy, and she's just like, well, you know, we can watch we can let's watch something that you want to watch tonight and mm. i was just like okay so we're, we're we're gonna check out all the harry potters you fucking nerds hell we're yeah gonna, we're gonna dive into that i've never made it all the way through and i'm not one of the cool kids that like read the books when we were in like third mm-hmm. third grade or whatever brooks an uber fan and i think they're on hbo max probably i think that's what they that's a that's a warner brothers warner yeah brothers, yeah warner brothers we, we, property so yeah I, I mean i've seen i think up through like you know one through four mm-hmm. like a few times a piece but I'm, I'm excited for that um but yeah i was just in like a half hour funk today mm-hmm. so it was it wasn't like i don't know yeah the half hour funk huge. is real man yeah yeah no because or sometimes an hour funk i do know that feeling all too well where it's just kind of like you're going 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 and then the second you fucking stop you, you, there is like this little uh, i don't want to call it a monkey because monkeys are beautiful um <laughs> But no, it's like it's like like a really shitty iguana, just like it's like mouth breathing on your neck, being like, "Do better. <laughs> what are you doing?" And it's kind of like, "Get off my fucking back!" And then it just doesn't. But, well, and then you're, and then like because you're down about nothing, right? <laughs> I mean, in that in in that in, like that initial scenario I'm talking mm-hmm. about, like I'm down about literally nothing. Yeah. I'm just I'm hating on myself for not being occupied currently. So uh, so I guess you're able to identify it then. So because like for yes. me, because me because like, we're calling it just the half hour hour of funk but sometimes yeah. some, but sometimes it's just melancholy and then yeah, yeah. And i feel like that's a normal thing because one of the things we try to do I feel, I feel like humans do is that we we feel that kind of melancholic feeling uh-huh. for any amount of time and then we immediately instead of just sitting with it yeah and go letting it go just feeling it we look for something to make it go away and it's like <laughs> and it's like and sometimes if we just stop and just, i don't know if we just stop for a minute and just sit with it yep and I don't know, maybe do something nice for ourselves or take a nap 
Right. I was like, I don't know, because I wish that if every time I got depressed, I just took a nap and then I woke up for a little bit. Well, and then it like it, 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 you want to go down for an hour, but yeah. like a depressed nap, you just end up waking up at like midnight when you, when you went down for a nap at like two in the afternoon. And sometimes you just do that if you're super tired. Yeah. But like you that's when I day. that's when I wake up and then I'm, I wake up at mid, at midnight. And I'm like, fuck, <laughs> my whole day is gone. OK, now let's watch Harry Potter. Yeah, we're gone. <laughs> no, man, I know that. I know this show too well. I I. I, I did I did that a lot in my twenties where I would just come home and then I'm like honestly maybe it's not melancholy sometimes I'm just like just you come in for an afternoon nap and then you fucking lay down yep and then a fucking six or seven hours go by <laughs> and the whole night's fucking and like whole night's ahead of you but it's too late to do anything right it was the worst well and fucking like, worst and um I mean my brain because I I think like melancholy I'm fine mm-hmm. you know because that's that's I think melancholy a lot of times just comes from like boredom or like, and I'm a very like mm. antsy person. I want to just be moving around. So melancholy for me just can come from like a inactive, like I'm not doing anything to occupy my brain mm-hmm. and, and whatever. And then when we were talking about like the half hour of funk, mm. hour of funk, that's like negative thoughts the, mm. the whole time. So mm. it's just like, I can't break out of this mm-hmm. and then you start hating on yourself like why the fuck am i hating on myself yeah like you start call i'm i call my that's my internal uh uh, uh, uh fucking monologue it's yeah. just like wh- wh- hating on myself for hating on myself so it's just like why the f- just get the fuck over it sam and have a better day and i'm i'm, I'm feeling great now because good yeah 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 my, my internal monologue it it doesn't and we and the, this is a hey abby Thank you for sending this to us. Oh, my, uh, yeah, that was an, uh, uh, an unknowing segue. Unknown, yeah, we right. got an email from a pal about yeah. about this internal monologue specifically. So. Yes, yes. In my internal monologue, it's it doesn't get into it. My internal monologue engages in casual shit talking to myself. So, uh-huh. so it's never just like you're fucking useless. You can't do anything right. No, no, no. But it's just more like. <laughs> like I am making some food and said, and then I will grab the, the fucking the cast iron pan on, on by the handle. That's clearly been underneath flames for a few seconds <laughs> and burn my hand. Right. And then I'm like, you fucking idiot. And <laughs> I say this shit to myself or, or I'll just say something or my, I have like a really dumb thought. I'm like, and you're a fucking idiot. And then I just keep going. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's, it's casual. Uh, what, what, what is it when you hate yourself? Is there like a, a word for that? Um, I mean, I think it's like it's like uh, self-loathing chatter. Yeah, it's, ca- I, it's ca- I, casual self-loathing. It, when I it, mine's like a constant like chatter because mm-hmm. like my brain is very ADHD. Mm-hmm. So like I'm thinking of the next thing I got to do or what I have to take care of later today or this task, this task, and I forget about what I'm currently fucking doing or like yeah. my brain isn't even like in it fully, mm-hmm. but. Since I stopped drinking, mm-hmm. my I've I've been able to be a little bit more in the moment and stop thinking so far fucking ahead mm-hmm. and and not thinking about the past. I'm trying to live more in the moment, which yeah, is man. like I I have to um, just with without the alcohol, I've had less depression, mm-hmm. less down moments. So my brain has been able to like actually tell myself, you know, um, maybe you should go do this or hey, it's okay that you took a fucking six hour seven hour nap yeah you fucking deserve it <laughs> yeah and, and like giving yourself throwing yourself a bone mm-hmm. giving yourself a break and just fucking chilling out yes. and letting yourself do that yes like, give yourself a bone I'll, i I give myself a bone most days like a couple times a day all right well thank you but I, I think everyone <laughs> should take more time to give themselves some bones i think so too shake those bones um speaking about uh not drinking look i don't know um what's that i said look at you man hell yeah well, tomorrow, this is going to come out, I think, like a week from now. Yeah. But um, tomorrow is my one-year anniversary of no alcohol. And that's super rad to say. What? Yeah, we need to get that button thing. Absolutely not. We're not getting that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one time we ever have this on, that on here. But, um, but I mean, I know I've talked about, you know, the, the sobriety in the past, but it's been, like, really weird um, – Cause it hasn't been like a problem really. Mm-hmm. Like it was, it was like a, a, a tempting thing like last summer, but then like coming into this year, like I drink these, um, not a sponsor, but Heineken zero. And, and it's so, I only started getting into these because you know, I'm working in the yard all the time mm-hmm. and like, uh, uh, a nice cold beer while you're working under the sun goes like hand in hand. But I, I thought it was lemonade. Um, I mean, I think I feel like more like when I'm raking an old lady's uh, leaves 
that's Word. that's <laughs> do you want some lemonade or or, or yeah. she has like a jello mold or some shit like fuck that <laughs> and anybody walks with a fucking jello mold i'm like thank you and then i will bury it <laughs> <laughs> underneath all the fucking leaves well so. and the only like with quitting drinking like the mm-hmm. only thing you know me being me i always have to find something fucking to hate on myself for mm-hmm. and it's just like so much um i I'm bummed about like wasting so much time, mm-hmm. like being unhappy because it didn't actually make me happy. You know, like it just affected um, my brain in a way that I didn't like for such a very long time. Mm-hmm. But it, it is just a, a it was a cycle in my brain of something that I, you know, thought I needed in certain scenarios to make me a more fun person. But yeah. then I don't know. I, so I hate on myself for wasting time and not being the greatest person I could be in certain scenarios and whatever. I always, and I've always been like jealous of people that can just have the one beverage or that can hold their booze and not act a fool all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some people they drink, they they drink and they get drunk. Well, and that's yeah. all I. Yeah. Th- yeah. That's all it is. That's yeah. all I ever I ever knew. And I'm yeah. such a lightweight, like you know, five beers, and I'm pretty buzzed Mm -hmm. and and then it's just like okay we're good for the night let's go let's let's fucking do it and then that those for like first like six months of this you know this past year like having a lot of time to just like think about um those times and Mm -hmm. how i could have just i could have enjoyed a lot of things a lot more for a very long time in my life and uh, but but it's a journey You, you had to go through all that to get here right so well and i just i try not to um I try not to like beat myself up for my past because all I have control of now is what I do in the future. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty fucking stoked about that. So, I mean, I'm I'm really um, proud of you, dude. Thank you. Fucking did that shit. When are you? I mean, and, and I, yeah, it's, it's something that I've, I've had or I knew I had to do Mm -hmm. and I've, um, I've been wanting to do it for a very long time. And then I just like, I think it clicked in my brain once I became, a dad Mm -hmm. because I was just like, dude, you can't, you can't get in these funks anymore. And yes, I still get into fucking funks. When we say funks, you just mean like, like just um, like just having a half hour funk. Well, no, like when I was drinking, Mm -hmm. it's, it's much more. So this is a drinking funk, not, 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 not not a, not a melancholic funk. Correct. Like, cause not, not like just the day to day. Like it was, it was like, I'm, I'm drinking because I'm depressed, mm-hmm. but then that amplifies the depression by yeah. 10. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, oh, let's drink some more because why not be self destructive? Because mm-hmm. you're not worth it. Nothing's worth it. You know, yeah. like that's the mentality that's going on in your brain. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, you can get drunk and have fun because nothing fucking matters. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the, you know, the number one thing in the world that matters came into my life. Yeah. And I was just like, I need to be the best dude I can be. And I'm not a person that could handle alcohol. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, this is also not me hating on alcohol. Like I, 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 uh, or alcoholics or alcoholics. Yeah. I enjoy people that can drink and people that, um, you know, can't and, you know, I, and maintain ex- exactly yeah. like anybody that's able to do whatever they do. Yeah, more power um, to I'm just talking about my experience mm-hmm. and I don't, I don't want to like ostracize anyone no, for, good. for, you know, in our, in our listeners for what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just talking about my experience. Yeah, so. man, well, you, you've come a long way. Uh, one year is fucking a big deal. And I, I am, I'm real. I'm, I'm really stoked for you, be, uh, because you, I, to see how you've changed, and how you've embraced, um, your sobriety in a way that is, uh, con- conducive to like a, a healthy, healthier path forward. Like your liver loves you, <laughs> your family I mean, I loves you. So. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, I'm your a friends much, love you. Well, and I think I've. Like I, I don't see um, people. I'm not as social just because I'm I'm busier, you and know, with pandemic. the with the kid, and it's a p- pandemic. Yeah. But like I, um, I think I'm easier to be around. <laughs> you know, like hey, in, hey, in 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 that, in a lot of circumstances, true. yeah. So and I, I mean, people haven't even like told me that. I just I can genuinely just tell that in the past year, I think I've been a little bit more fun than, yeah. no, than you, when I, than when not, I was we're, drinking. We're so. not worried about you falling face first into the fire anymore. And that was the thing. Like this is friends nice. propping me up on the wall. Yeah. Um, people picking me up out of the fire, dude. Um, Oh yeah. And last time we talked about my, my drinking days, I did want to talk about some stories. I scared a gal once with my vomit. Um, I was, what? Yeah. We were like sitting outside of uh Jesus. local watering hole down here yeah. and, and, and I 
I just felt like the urge, um, you know, it's a long night of drinking and I just felt the urge I had to go puke. And so I went into the alley and I'm, I'm wasted. So I'm unaware of, and I've, I'm unaware of literally fucking anything. So I just go by the dumpster and I puke. This gal just got out of her car and she screamed. <laughs> and I don't, I, I don't even think she knew what was going on when I got back there at first, but she just like got out and there's a dude in the alley. And then I just puked. puked so, and then I just turned around and like walked away and I was yeah. like, is all right. You could, you're, 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 a, you're a good person. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, that's uh, that is uh, horrific. Yeah, I, <laughs> I didn't puke on her, so I, I got to give myself props for yeah. that. But uh, definitely not <laughs> stoked bare, on that. The bare minimum was that I didn't puke. On <laughs> <laughs> well, I I used to um, I used to always you know as a I'm a uh, drummer and in, in uh, I've played in bands for years mm-hmm. and I always just thought like you know. Uh, for you know, alcohol just goes hand in hand with no. playing live shows and, yeah, and all yeah, these things. Yeah. It is it is within it's, that it's a social lubricant. Ex- exactly, yeah. and it also gets rid of the nerves. Mm-hmm. You know, um, what do they call it? Liquid courage or, or yeah. whatever. It's one of those um, and I just love being on stage, mm-hmm. but I would for a long time get fucking wasted. Yeah. Like there's shows that I've drank like a gallon of wine and I'm falling backwards off of the stage. Um, in the in the hometown, there's a, a spot called the Keller Bar, which is at the red carpet. Mm-hmm. That's where all the um, punks used to hang out. I think it's like, um, what's the, what's the e- EDM. Now they, I, I think they just, they do a lot of Great. EDM shows. Somebody, somebody posted a meme of the Keller bar and they were like, uh, Keller bar in 2016. And it's just like a, a, a punk pit. Yeah, <laughs> and then, and then, uh, Keller bar in 2021 or 2020. And it's, yeah. and it's just like, nt, nt, Boots nt, and nt. And so, so yeah, yeah. but, um, but we're playing a show down there one, one night and I think I was drinking wine all night mm-hmm. and I just fall back off of my stool as I'm drumming. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we're playing, we're punk bands. So we're just going like fast going, uh, super high energy but I just fall straight backwards. I didn't know that there was a door there because there's like a curtain um, covering, oh, Jesus, yeah. covering the wall behind me. <laughs> yeah. But there's a door that's there. Mm. And I I, I've ne- I never knew about that. And um, I, I fell through the door. Like the door just like I, I fell fell down uh, like probably like a three stair, like a three uh, set of stairs mm-hmm. from my drum throne Jesus. backwards. And I'm in a kitchen that's in the basement and no, I don't think any, this is at the killer bar. Yeah. There's, I, yeah, there's I, a whole kitchen. There's, there, a, isn't there's a kitchen yeah, behind where the stage is at. Right, yeah. And I never knew that until I was wasted on stage, Jesus. uh, fell. And like, obviously we had to stop the song. People were laughing, which, yeah. cause if you see a drummer do that, yeah. that is fucking funny. <laughs> um, I'll give you that. But, yeah. but like different scenarios like that, um, I don't know, just a little, little, maybe too ridiculous. Yeah. Well, it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the, 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 it ended and now you're here. You're, you're, well, you're into I mean, your sobriety. Well, well, yeah. And I, I'm just telling a couple stories of just mm-hmm. like, I mean, those times were fun of like playing shows. That was probably some of my favorite times of, um, when I was in my like deepest of, of, of drinking, mm-hmm. you know, and you think that, you're going to start playing shows again? I mean, I don't. I'm not in a band. All my all my groups are are uh, defunct. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, I mean, I I would love to play music with people, but I I I have to do something that's a little different. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I guess I don't know. I don't even know what I would want to do. Like, um, I I want to do like a weird. I want to have a drum kit that I can either pack into one little fucking box or something. That's not or, that, that is not a drum kit that exists, sir. Oh yes, there is. There's there's many. So. Um, have you ever heard of like a cocktail drum kit? A cocktail drum kit is where like there, well, there's one that's made by Tama that is a cocktail drum kit. So the, the bass kick is, it goes vertical instead of horizontal and it's, it's underneath mm-hmm. the, the kick pedal hits on the bottom. And then the bass Tom is on top of that. And then you have a snare and a Tom on it. And that all fits into one. So w- that w- all fits into one little fucking bag. Would that be efficient for the for the punk bands that you? No, play? I, I don't want to play. I don't want to play punk. Like I've been thinking more so along the lines of like some, um, um, like do you know who Anderson Pac is? I think that I think that's how you say his last name. Pac. Yeah. Pac. Yeah. P a a k. Yeah. But his drum style is fucking amazing, yeah, and I and I could great. see I could see him jamming out on one of these little sets. So if I. Like I want to do maybe some like little like funky um, hip hop style stuff. Like imagine imagine like him or like like a Stevie Wonder or something mixed with like some hip hop or something. Mm. But I don't I don't even I don't even know who I would play music with anymore. I also 
don't even know if I have the fucking time. I just want to get a drum kit so I can just start jamming and, you know, playing by myself mm-hmm. or, or have somebody come over in the basement or me go somewhere. Um, yeah, now we're... You can go to Guitar Center. <laughs> you just roll up. I need a drum set. And just, <laughs> yeah. like, just go into this, like, set it all up in the little sound room. Well, and I just... I. <laughs> um, I mean, I used to be the dude that would like hang out at like a music store, but I don't know if I could, uh, I don't know if I, I could like go in and, and try and keep up with the, the drummers there now. Cause mm-hmm. I, I think I'm a little rusty, a little, <laughs> little rusty. I, I'd have to brush the dust off. Mm-hmm. So. Word up. Well, I'm, I'm proud of you. Well, you were, well, Is thank it? you. Yeah. Thank you. You were you were playing in shows for a while, like last year, and and you're. I've always told you you were a great singer. Thank you. We were we were in a band. We that was one of the first times I ever performed live. Mm. Um, was in I think we were sophomores or juniors yeah, in high we, school. Yeah, we were the three hundred pound love tank. Yeah, that thanks was, Dave for yeah. the band name. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it was great. But um. But no, I always thought that you were like a great performer Thank and, you. and that your your voice was and I know you hate I know you hate it when I tell you all of this because no, you, you hate the, the compliments, but yeah, I, I think yeah. you do know deep down that you are a good singer. So. I think that I can carry a tune. Uh, I definitely don't I don't stay up on it as much as I should, but I also don't do very much that hinders my voice from turning to shit. So it's been Right. I, I do speak with like a lower register. But I can get high. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's fun. Um I I uh I do have a lot of nerves when it comes to singing. Um mostly because like like when I when I do get on the stage, like I have to get into it, and it's one of those things where you like you have to be brave for fifteen seconds yep. to do anything. Yeah, it's like oh you have to do a thing, but the one thing you have to do to get past that point is like the the scariest part. Right. For me, like I have nerves until I get like the first fifteen seconds of the song, and then I'm then then it's like all right you're fucking in now, bro, and then <laughs> and then, then that that's where my my negative self talk comes in like come on you fucking piece of shit let's fucking go let's fucking go when is that is that for each song or is that just no, for that, like that, starting the, out the, the set the very but... starting of the set okay yeah. yeah no it was uh I got asked to be in a band uh way future rate uh after I. Uh, one of my ex partners, uh, they asked me to be in the Lion King play for their school. I oh played, yeah, and I played, yeah, I played, yeah. And I played Mufasa, and and, and that's then, so perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and one of my homies, uh, who's in a band, the him, he brought his son to, it and he's like, and then he, he was like, you can sing. I was like, he's like, yeah. He's like, okay. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then a few weeks later, then he's like, do you want to be? You want to check out our band? And I was like, sure. Yeah, that sounds tight. And then we just played and we fucking, we made a bunch of songs and we, we honestly, we stayed in the fucking practice space for a year. We didn't come out until like, until like the following month. Well, I was so stoked on that. And yeah. I, I was at your first show, right? Yeah. That the, was your first one? As a band. Yeah. That was at the um, Moon Palace Books. Yeah. 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 Bathroom. That was, that was fucking great. Cause, um, and I think I told you it was like Incubus meets like something a little <laughs> something something a little bit more Wait, hardcore because because you can do your grunts and like get down with like a like yeah. you weren't doing like a full on metal voice but you could get pretty yeah, fucking hardcore but, but on the that, breakdowns yeah, and shit. But yeah, thank you. But that was one of those things where it's like we like we we didn't have our sound yet because we hadn't played outside of it. So when we went into it, it was like it, I was singing like Incubus, but they were playing like fucking Dillinger Four. So it was like so so everyone was like so people were like we like it, but what are you guys trying to do here? I was like. I don't fucking know. And um, and then once he did, then they were like, hey, dude, so you know how you're doing all that? Uh, like, he's like, yeah, like, it's very beautiful. And we like it. However, <laughs> keep it simple. And I was like, okay, yeah, I can do that. It was, it was, if anything, it was just bringing it back and then like really learning how to play with my voice. Well, um, and that's the thing is you do know how to play with your voice. But no, here's the thing, though. It's, but since I don't, I don't do it professionally and I don't do it all the time. And like I w- at the time, I had to like really kind of like figure out what that means. Also, we're working, we're in a fucking practice space. We have a PA, yep. but at, they're all fucking playing in a, with a drum set three, six feet to my fucking left. It's just loud, so I can't hear myself. So by the time we get done practicing, I'm like, I can't hear anything. I can barely hear me. I hope that I sound cool. And right. Then, <laughs> uh, but it was a lot of fun. I I really appreciated the time with the guys uh the pandemic definitely put we, we the pandemic started the weekend before we were going to go into the studio and record and that gets kind of it just deaded it low and and only we would have went in to try and knock it out right away but we couldn't because uh, my drummer's kid's sister oh no my, my drummer his his kid had a friend whose mom was in the hospital and they weren't sure if it was with the with the 
with the with, with, the, with COVID. Yeah. So he was kind of like, I don't know if I should be if my kid has it. If my kid has it, and I might have it. Then me going into a right a room for thirty six hours with you guys to record is a good idea. And I was like, we we're all like, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for thanks for doing that. Yeah. So, uh, but no, it was a lot of fun, and I, I do miss it. But we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um. I mean, I don't know. I just, I do miss that, but I also like, you know, we're, this is also a new venture for us and this isn't like music or whatever, but mm-hmm. this is like for the first time, like a creative endeavor. That's like, it was, it was like out, it's outside of my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Um, You're talking about this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like us doing the pod food for worms. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what this is called folks. Is that, is that what it is? Yeah. I'm, I'm Sam. That's, <laughs> we're going to just re-intro it. Leave me alone. But, but no, um, <laughs> but I mean, I don't know. It was, it was nice to like do this because it's an outlet um you know like aside from like i played in music for like 10 15 years Mm -hmm. for like five of those years i thought i was gonna go somewhere and i was gonna be like some big big thing and um i mean that's extremely tough to do Mm -hmm. and and also um but i mean it was fun having the hopes in it i mean we play we played with some great uh bands Mm -hmm. some pretty rad yeah, fucking show here's the so. thing man like as long as everybody has like managed expectations and people know what they want and what the capabilities are when they when they go into it like you can still play like like i think that just being in a band can either be a hobby or it can be a real or, or like it, it can be a passion obviously and making music is is a passion pursuit right your artistic expression is a passion pursuit but it can but it and it all comes down to circumstances in people's lives but it's like it can just be like anything like if you put if you make the time to do it whatever your circumstances are, you can do it. It's right. like, and it's different for everybody. Sometimes people can't do it and that's fair, but sometimes it's just like, if if you're going to either play in the band or if you're going to play fucking Magic the Gathering sometimes, or if right. you're going to, if you're going to play in the band, um, if you're going to make some music or if, you, if your hobby is, if your hobby, if you have a, what you do during the day, yep. and sometimes at night, and then you also want to play in this band, but you're also really into fucking rock climbing. Huh? <laughs> like, which one do you want to do more? Some people, they choose music. I don't know. I just, some people, they just don't think that you can do it because they don't have the time. It's like, no, it's just like anything. You, right. Time, dedication. Well, and, that's why and, I want, that's why I just want to hop back on the drum kit because mm-hmm. that's what I want to do, like, specifically. You know what I mean? So like, you could I, be an excellent theremin player. I, I'll do theremin. <laughs> what, what, what is that? Like, um, that was. Um, the theremin, the, I think the, like the the group that made it famous um, was the Beach Boys, which you'd never think that. But in hmm. in uh, Good Vibrations, that's the that's in the beginning of Good Vibrations. It's mm. like I don't know a lot of Beach Beach Boys songs. But yeah, the theremin. That's I guess the first thing I knew of this weird fucking little doodly bob thing. Um but yeah, I mean, for I mean, years I was in a ska band, and I thought, like, now that I look back at it na- uh, now, like for four years we got together once a week mm-hmm. with seven people, mm-hmm. like in the same room, half of which weren't weren't even in the Twin Cities. Yeah. Like, th- you know, two of the dudes had to cruise down to the cities every week, and they fucking did it, yeah. mo- like most of the time. And those were our horn players. We had three fucking horn players, and and we played fast. We were fucking loud. Mm-hmm. Chilling in Southside Minneapolis, just making extreme noise. Smoking cigarettes inside of the, of the non-ventilated room. Yeah, y'all used to kill me with that. She's like, "Hey, do you come over and hang out?" I'm like, ah, I'm <laughs> "No, <far>. no AC." <laughs> um, and and but yeah, like just a bunch of smelly, uh, smelly things. And, yeah. and like I mean, stuff went south with that group, and but I still love all the guys, yeah. you know. But I mean, I just I. I cherish those times mm-hmm. because it was a very large part of my life, mm-hmm. you know, for a very long time. Yeah. But it's, but, but I, I don't know if I could ever do a thing where I get seven people together again. Yeah. You no, know, that's, it, that's a lot of people it, committing it, a lot to it. it you know, a, it's, it's everyone else going into it with the understanding being like, this is a commitment and yep. everyone kind of be on the same page about it. And some people, they aren't able to, and that's fine. Uh, sometimes it's just, you just try to give it a try. And if you get into it and you realize you can't, then you can't, but. Well, we uh, put out we put it out put out an album. You know, I yeah. I don't know if we've probably sold like I don't know fifty copies or something. <laughs> I think we I, I don't know where they all are. I've got I've got I've got a box of them, and then um, but we have like five or six boxes of them. Nice. And so I mean, Whiskey City Tango. Anybody wants a CD? <laughs> uh, hit me up. Yeah, and I, I love it because when we got them, people people would be like, "You guys have CDs? <laughs> What's up with like?" I think now people expect more for a record than a cd mm. which is funny because 15 20 years ago 
that wouldn't be the case. It'd yeah. be all CDs. Yeah, you yeah. Know? No, because 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 the, there's the uh, the novelty of it. Right. Yeah. Well, the the resurgence of vinyls is yeah. fucking huge. Yeah. You know? but, but but like but like instead of like do you putting money into making a bunch of fucking jewel case CDs, it's like right. Like very few people are listening to music on on their CDs in their cars anymore. Like if it's not like sound fucking DSPs or like the Spotify or whatever. What's a DSP? A direct service provider. What is it? Spotify. Like Spotify? Is oh, a, okay. It's a DSP. So. Man, you would throw some acronym at me. DSP. P- it's, it's technical P- jargon, sir. P- I'm sorry that I got bougie on you. PSP be- on the HBO Max with the <laughs> PCP and the LSD. On the next, on the Netflix uh, float, float. Yeah. Just, just not CNN. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll be right back. thing about how um kids are fucking weird recently oh yeah like i see all, it all, all i see it all day every day little th- yeah you see it all the fucking time so it's <laughs> like for me like all my interactions with kids it's just like in passing so uh-huh. or, or like or my niece or my niece and my nephew or my other grandchildren and they're just little little balls of energy yeah that would just say and do whatever with reckless abandon because they're a child and like all the little weird things that kids do and and then I think about like what weird shit I used to get into, right? <laughs> and, and and all like the little gross things that that I would do as a kid. That as you got older, either through um, either over time realizing that that's a gross thing that is unacceptable right. outside of your home, or 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 you didn't realize that and then you kept you, you, you still you, you your still boogers. do it you still eat your boogers type <laughs> shit and motherfuckers do that like, oh i know no my god like uh I, i've seen just driving like everybody's like you're just driving you're like oh my nose like you see like yeah, but your nose a little bit but you're not digging in there i've been at a fucking intersection and seen some adult like n- like second knuckle deep up their <laughs> fucking nose just in there picking their fucking brain i'm just looking like that's the- Mm, gross but that, that's the thing that apparently they fucking kept from being a kid and everything right but just all the little things that that all little weird things i guess weird is a is an open is an umbrella statement what uh, weird yeah well, kid, kids in general just everything you know, they do is weird yes they are but, 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 but i'm but, talking like what do you what what from your childhood like no, specifically uh, yeah before i get to my childhood i'm trying to get i'm trying to make i'm trying to define the umbrella that is weird so, oh, okay, so, okay. so, yeah, so yeah, we're, yeah. Not, we're not putting anybody in a corner. So, right. <laughs> so, because <laughs> it's like, because like weird is just like, like, uh, you you wouldn't go to bed unless you're fucking unless like uh all of your fucking toys or pictures were turned a different way or oh yeah or or you or like for me like one of the things I did was like I obsessively and compulsively cleaned my ears as a kid but only because like some really shitty stuff happening once with my ears so, <laughs> so it's all those little things so just like but like with Q-tips or or yes like like with a with one of the like water thingies that uh one you, of the, like, I'm actually poured... I am actually deathly afraid of using one of those fucking water water things but no, i was with a q-tip no my, my my little thing i kept as a like as a kid we went to as a kid i was a kid once um <laughs> uh, my first time going to the roller garden that's about to close down over in fucking st louis park or whatever um first time ever going i think i was like five uh-huh uh, we were going in early evening it was the fall and my mom was like we're going to the skating rink so she's like getting us all ready and then i go to clean my ears she goes she puts, sits me down and she starts to clean my ears out with a with a q-tip and then she pulls it out, and the fucking cotton swab is nowhere to be seen. And then I couldn't hear anything. And I was like, Mom! 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 And she's like, what? I'm like, the thing is in my ear, and I can't fucking hear. And I was afraid. All of a sudden, everything is like, mm-hmm. Oh, man. On, on the and- right side of my head. I was like, what the fuck? So she's like, calm down, calm down, calm down. And then she like sets me down and I'm like freaking out. I'm like, God, and she like gets a tweezers and she goes right in my fucking ear and pulls it right out with a bunch of earwax. And oh, then wow. I, but I was just like freaked out. And then from that point on, I was so freaked out by it that I was just kind of like, no one's ever touching my ears again. No one will ever hurt me. Fuck all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Every time my mom was like, Oh, but your hearing was like good. Like after inst- that, it instantly? was fine. But, but 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 it was just yeah. But but at the time, it was like a one Q tip in my ear. And the thing was like one of the shittier ones that just comes off if you're not right. fucking careful. Right. That's what happened. And it just stayed in there. But it was only there for a few minutes. But it was enough for me as a kid to be like that was fucking terrifying. And uh, but then after that, then I was like, no one will ever touch these precious fucking like um, sound sound holes again. Right. These are my sound holes. 
<laughs> okay. Right. And then it got so bad to the point where I, I didn't clean them. I allowed anyone to clean my mom. She's like, clean your own ears. So she'd give me Q-tips. And then I would just throw them away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've like, never been a fan. Yeah. It's awful. And then I just didn't. And then I got so bad. She's like, why? I was like, and she, it was one I couldn't hear anymore because I had so much fucking backup in my ear. And then she's like, you have to clean your ears. So I did it one time. And it was the most satisfying fucking feeling in the world, Sam. I was just like this. I was like, oh, oh, my God. Oh, get all of it. Oh, <laughs> do you want to clean mine? You, absolutely not. Go fuck yourself. No, <laughs> but no, but that was like the, the one of the little weird things that I just kind of just like that once it was all done, then, then I, I've, I've never been able to achieve that moment again. So it was just kind of like. Like, cause, what, because that's I, what D's striving I shut for. The fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> because I, because I, honestly, to this day, I, I obsessively come clean. I obsessively clean my ears, and it's more like, and I would say it's less obsessive, more as like it's just a, a tick that yeah. I do. So I'll go into the bathroom to wash my hands, and then before I wash my hands, I tell them to do it twenty seconds, soap <laughs> suds, like, dry them off, walk, <laughs> reach over to the thing, grab a Q-tip, do both of my ears, and then walk out the bath. <laughs> And the, the worst way I will look for hey, anybody listening to this podcast have been in your house. If your Q tips been out, I have definitely cleaned my ears in your home. I am not fucking sorry. It is my one weird thing that. I well, do. I mean, if they're out, I mean that's kind of, that's it's it's, it's not it's, it's not a, like it's not like if you were yeah, to use but, my toothbrush. Okay. That's 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 fine. If, if there's a box I, of fucking Q tips, use I, one. You know, for sure. But also, when you think people are using your bathroom, we don't think they're fucking cleaning the earwax. That's not that's not in the social contract. Well, yeah, it's not like you're tossing it on the floor either, though. Oh, I do. Oh, okay. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, uh, but that one, uh, I used to sing it t- uh, like in fourth grade. I would just sing at the fucking uh, top volume. I would sing in sync the back of the bus just to, <laughs> just to fuck with people and just kind of like, uh, what other weird shit? How about you? What, what um, you well, into? like wh- when you started talking, I was trying to like think of um, stuff that I did as a little kid. And like one thing that I was, it was always so weird. I made potions mm. out of just like oh, the random, oh, the ra- no. like the random chemicals <laughs> that you find in the medicine cabinet. And like, oh, under, no. under, I know, I know. And like, <laughs> kids don't fucking do this. And I, I'm so happy. I didn't fucking blow up anything. I'm pretty sure I used Drano and like Jesus the shit that Christ. could actually fuck some shit up. Yeah. But like, I would, I would like make these things. And then my mom or dad would find a bottle that says Sam's potion on it. And it'd, and then, be, it'd be like in the medicine cabinet and it's got fucking, um, uh, what, what's it called? Um, fingernail polish remover. And then I throw a fucking, um, like, I think I put like Tylenol and stuff, cough medicine, all of these things. And this is when I'm like four or five years yeah. old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm doing as a fucking only child. Like super, like, uh, um, just getting into the weirdest shit possible. But like, it, it made it made me think of um, like as a little uh, a man will always remember the first time I think they get hit in the balls really bad. Yeah. Right. Yep. And one time I'm working on my potion. I'm in the middle of it and I'm standing on our like vanity sink mm-hmm. or whatever. Like, you know, grabbing stuff out of the medicine cabinet like I do when I make Sam's potions. And <laughs> <laughs> That's and the name of the episode. I'm sorry. Sam's, Sam's potions. potions. <laughs> and and I think my mom or somebody like like, you know, we're we're just like looking for me. They called for me or whatever. And mm. I slipped off the counter oh, off no. off the sink and I like four or five year old self mm-hmm. lands straight on my nutsack on the uh, the oh, cor- on the no. corner of the vanity oh, sink, no. and I was on the Ugh. I was on the floor in the bathroom bawling, and my mom comes in. She's like, "Honey, what's going on?" And I was, like, "I'm making a potion, <laughs> <laughs> and I hit my balls." <laughs> <laughs> and your mom doesn't know what to do in that scenario, yeah. like, like it fucking hurts. And yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to complain because I've, I've. T- um, you probably heard it more since then. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean, I've been hitting the in the crotch. Yeah, I mean, it it fucking happens. But mm. that was like the first thing I thought of mm. uh, of like what I would do as like a little kid. I got into some fucking weird ass shit. Like I always liked. Um, um, I would go into, and I still like doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, there was growing up, there was a like a woods across the street from my house in in Waite Park, Minnesota. Yep. And it's no longer there now. It's like a housing development, whatever. But I would go across the street and I just always liked finding like the dead trees and then like pushing them over. Mm. And so then, oh, I made a tree fall to the ground and and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And then it like coming into my like adult age, 
um, like college years or like early twenties, mm-hmm. um, you know, getting drunk with your friends out at the, the Talahi quarries in St. Cloud <laughs> up by the, up by the, the St. Cloud prison yeah. and you're just pu- push it over a dead tree and mm-hmm. then you drag it and you just burn it, put, you know, put it on fire. Uh, but that was like a, a large part of my life yeah. for, for a long time. Like mm. that, that brings me back to the last time I, uh, took lsd um i was or no not the last time i went but this time i went to um i went to the fireworks for uh the fourth of july Mm -hmm. on acid with my with i'm not gonna give any names with it with it with it with a with a a couple of friends and and we are just like sinking into the ground as um okay my segue will come back to 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 this here but um but no, we're we're like sinking into the ground and like it's amazing. Like the whole fireworks display was great, but we didn't like think about okay, after this is done, what are we going to do? And we're at Riverside Park. There's thousands of people there. Mm-hmm. And we're right on the edge of the water, so we're surrounded by everyone else that's behind us. Mm-hmm. So we get up and you know, I'm peeking at this point and um fucking we're like zombies walking like thousands of people through this park Mm -hmm. as zombies. And then we were like, yeah, I can't, I can't be around these people anymore. Mm -hmm. So we just went down to the river. We started pushing trees over and having a fire down by the river. Mm -hmm. And that was, that's what saved the evening. And um, I guess that was a weird segue and I'm sorry, but, but but, uh, (laughs) that was one of the greater trips that I had, Mm. um, you know, pushing trees over and and burning them. Um, One of the things I used to do uh, when I was uh, like, fourth grade we lived in this apartment in this uh town hall complex uh-huh. and whenever they would like it would be like one long road up the middle all the little garages next to all townhomes go into where they go and at the very end of it there was a row of garages facing uh-huh. the other way uh-huh. and then there was big space and there was like a basketball court basically just like a bunch of spaces for overflow of cars excuse me and then um and then whenever it would snow they would shovel everything or they would plow everything into like a fucking gigantic mountain Uh at the very edge on the far right. And then every winter it would turn into, we we would carve out every time it would snow, they would push more onto it and then we would carve it into like a fucking, we we never dug underneath it because everyone was kind of like, the best part is like everyone agreed that was like, if we do, if we do, if we do tunnels or anything like that, and it collapses, we could die. Yep. And that was the one thing. <laughs> that was the one thing that everybody was like could all could all agree on is like, no, like if we're gonna do anything, have it on top because if, <laughs> if we're all top, <laughs> somebody's below, someone's gonna die. And that was the one thing I appreciate everyone was having, even like us at our age being like, we have enough sense not to kill ourselves. Yeah, you're a little aware to yeah to do that shit, but we would do a bunch of shit on top, and we would make like a whole. Uh, it was it, it looked like a fucking like Chronicles of Narnia, just like like a, a bunch rad. of different seats and shit. Uh-huh. And then I would be like, but here's the thing: like, I would it would be Chronicles of Narnia, but it would also create like it was like a like Star Trek Next Generation. Uh-huh. I'd be like, yes, yeah, so you're Counselor Troy, and you're my number two, and <laughs> or, or num, number one, and <laughs> like you back there, you'll you'll be engineering, and you'll be <laughs> shit. And we make all those little spots, and then we just sit there and just be like, yes, mm-hmm. and then we just we just we would play court. Uh, we, we would just play like just hold court, uh-huh. and then somehow we, we, every every other day, and while everything's slowly melting around us, it would just be like, "All right, who's king today?" <laughs> yeah, it's tight. Uh, but but it, but it also, I think as a young kid, it it made me realize that like I was like pretty decent at like directing people, but like looking like being if I know somebody well enough to see what their strengths are, uh-huh. and be like, "Yeah, you're good with talking with people, so you're gonna be the counselor, and then you're gonna be the, <laughs> you're you're a bit of a badass, so you're gonna be head of security." <laughs> <laughs> All right, you have a good head on your shoulders. You like you fucking fighting. You're not. You're now our knights errant, and whatever the fuck that means. Or like just shit that you just hear. Um, and but yeah, I just remember just like. But there are times as an adult, I'm sitting there, and if I am in a situation where I'm like looking at a group of people and I'm trying to figure out what their strengths are, so I'm gonna be like. You also play D and D, so uh, yeah, that's D and D. I'm talking about like real life shit. Oh, okay. So um, no, like D and D, it's like it's a person playing another person. So that, at that point, it's kind of like, and then there's a bleed over with Dungeons and Dragons. It's like. No, don't tell me what you, Sam, would do. Tell me what Elfgar the Elf would do. There's would my he... name, Elfgar Elf... the Elf. Jesus. All right, so <laughs> Elfgar the Elf. Zero imagination on my part. But... <laughs> Thelonious Funk, that'll be your name. Oh, I like that even more. We're <laughs> the doing Bard. That. <laughs> uh, but, the, uh, but just being able to look at but look, being able to look at people, once I get to know them, be like, what are your strengths are? Especially like when we're working at First Avenue. Right. Um, when I'm sitting in a situation or... 
or just an evening and I'm like, who do I have on deck? Cause they would give us a, sl- a piece of paper with everybody's name be like, who do I have on there? I look at him like, Oh, I got so-and-so and so, so night tight. Where are they at? Oh, we're going to, Oh, they got to be the stationary position. Okay. Cause usually they're good. If like, I need, if I need some other, like some good fucking backup, I can depend on those two. Everyone else is like, y'all are cool. Come and help if you can, but you're not the first person I'm calling. Matter of fact, I'm giving those two radios. <laughs> and if you see them running, then you follow them type shit. Um, but yeah, yeah, I just remember even as a kid, I was kind of like trying. I was, I felt like I could try and zero in on what I felt like people would be or like what their what their strengths are. Yeah, yeah. In situations and then, and the but when I'm in situations where I'm trying to do that as an adult, I have these little flashbacks to me holding court on top of a pile of ice and snow and trash, basically. <laughs> yeah, I my my um where i built the snow fort in my driveway was definitely like where our trash was and like (laughs) now that i'm a parent i'm just like thinking like where i was at a car could definitely run over where my fucking (laughs) fort was if i was in it and now i'm just like i don't think i'd let my kid do that but but um but that's just me as a dad now but I, i i guess i like weird shit that i'm like thinking of what like what you did as like a kid like the shit you made believe or uh played make believe with you mm-hmm. know like with your friends and whatever mm-hmm. like yeah we're just hitting each other with sticks mm-hmm. down by the river um because I, I lived like close to the river <laughs> but you it always but, rivers but, with you but, yeah i don't know um but like and and now i just like think of those things because i'll see kids like mm-hmm. playing with sticks and that that was larping before it was larping mm-hmm. i guess i don't i don't know how long larping has been around but yeah. but i mean that's what we were fucking doing yeah. like nine ten years old like because i always wanted to be a ninja when yeah. i was a kid like i loved <laughs> i loved tmnt like mm-hmm. that was my jam and uh like um uh, street fighter yeah and then fucking um, th- three three ninjas yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he just, but while he's making that sound, well, you can... he's kicked you in the face 14 times and now you're dead. So, <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, so I was always just like playing ninja and mm-hmm. that's like what I thought I was going to be like, to, like this is like young yeah. me. That's a pipe dream is yeah. I'm going to be a ninja. And that's, that's you what I'm going to be when I grow up. The fuck you want. And you then I want to, then I wanted to be a firefighter. You can be, an, you can be, you can practice the ancient art of ninja now if you wanted to. Um, what was I going to say? I always thought, we, like, as a kid, uh-huh. is the one thing I it, it stayed with me. Um, you know, like, whenever it, it's it's the same phenomena of like uh, automatic doors, uh-huh. and if you get closer, <laughs> the, the sensor goes off and opens. Yeah, it's like that, but it's like uh, when I was a kid, same same house, same townhome. Uh, we lived next to a uh, next to a different quarry uh-huh. on, on the other side of town. And at the time we moved it, there was this big ass plot of open grass that has now been developed into apartments. But at the time, it was a big ass plot of grass. I just came. I, I moved in. I moved there from Minneapolis, uh-huh. north side of Minneapolis. So I moved out there. I'm like townhome, at least three or four blocks, square blocks of where I was from, of just grass, and then more apartment buildings. But at the end of the grass was this big ass sand pile, sand pile. Oh, rad! Just nothing there. But since it was always open space, we would just get those fucking, those those uh dust devils, like just D- like dust devils, or just or just like you know just uh dust devils are like like when there's enough sedi- that- when there's like enough air or there's like enough sedimentation and then there's an uh the wind is pushing in from different directions so it creates oh, like, I thought it was like a, I thought it was a vacuum. No, yeah, a it's vacuum a, cleaner. It, it's a vacuum cleaner, but it, it's got its name from a, <laughs> from a wind phenomenon called a fucking dust devil. But it, <laughs> but it's like a mini tornado, Sam, of just dirt oh, and sediment from grass and shit. About. Yes, and yes. Um, and then, but we, what we would do is we would act like we could control them, and then um, we would. So like if it was like it's my turn, it's my turn, and then one would pop up and we stand there and we'd be like, oh, try and hold and control, and then wherever we go, we push it into we like I pushed it into you, and it's like oh, and we fly off and whatever. But I but it, but even as an adult, if I see shit like moving around, I'll be like like I'll like twitch my hand like mm, I did that, <laughs> just like, or the opposite like and uh, or if a fucking automatic door is going off, I'll be like swipe and then you did up. you did do that though, i do dude. it i do it now like this isn't a f- this isn't a fucking game look at me i'm a dungeon master to six different people two, two, every other tuesday when i when i was a kid my um my my like sleeping was really weird mm-hmm. um because like my parents would get me up early in the morning so that they could like watch me while they're doing their thing and i i loved like sleeping on the bathroom floor 
when my parents were getting ready because mm. the, the steam from the shower mm. um always like super calming to me mm. i i've i still have fallen on the uh, fallen asleep on the floor in the bathroom like now mm. i've done that um yeah brooke will attest to it but like the laundry room like if i could go sleep on a fucking washer and dryer right now mm-hmm. I would I would feel fucking amazing, but I've like I I'm like the dude I've passed out at a party not because I was drunk but because I was tired mm. and like slept through the like the music I've slept on the floor at a um 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 like a dance party or whatever and like I don't know why that is like comforting to me mm-hmm. like knowing that a bunch of like shits going on like the the noise has always just been been able to like lull me to sleep mm-hmm. and I'll still I'm still able to just fall asleep on the floor. Um, I prefer to do it sometimes. It's like really weird and yeah. odd and, um, but yet I, I, I'm never that comfortable camping, mm. which is like weird, but yeah. I, maybe that's cause I didn't go camping a lot when I was a kid. I think that's part of it. I think if you spend a lot of time outside and by outside, I mean like in the middle of fucking nowhere yeah, with, with, with a trailer or just, uh, your parents fucking hatchback in a, in a, in a tent a lot as a kid, you're way more into it as an adult. Well, I that like I love sleeping because I do have a hatchback, so I like sleeping in that. But if it's if it's summer, like right now, it would be fucking agony. Yeah. Even with the windows open, it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be like a hundred degrees in there when you wake up in the morning. Mm-hmm. And like I slept in my Honda Civic, um, in Tennessee when I went to Bonnaroo, mm-hmm. and like waking up when it's hundred and thirteen degrees it's outside, yeah. and and no, it's, it's just whack. like. Oh my goodness! Yeah, like no. I've never felt anything other. But yeah. um, the, the one of the best feelings in the world of going to festivals is going home from festivals. <laughs> I don't care what anybody but, says. Like but, you, you go there, you make the memories, you have fun, but you're not gonna. But don't front the entire time. You're gross. Well, you're, it's all gross. <laughs> well, we were getting messed up at Bonnaroo allegedly, and <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and now it's allegedly. Get the yeah. fuck out of here. <laughs> But but um like the drive home was not fun like it it took way longer than it should have because mm. it was like a like a mega hangover you know <laughs> and then and because we left the night before the thing ended so that we could get like a head start home which I don't know if that was a great idea mm. we ended up like sleeping at all the rest areas and rest stops and and whatever but like I said I don't mind sleeping in weird fucking spots like I don't know I I'm I'm okay with it and I, um. Hmm. How about this? Because of my experience with touring, I would rather sleep in a I would rather sleep in a in a in a hotel period than sleep in a car if I don't have to. Mostly because like you're sitting there, sure those windows being tinted, I just feel exposed like a motherfucker. The few times I've had to sleep outside in a car like that, it's like we were in such a con- inconspicuous place that uh-huh. like there's no reason why anybody should walk up on us. But like me having but having to sleep in a car at like a truck stop, yeah, no fucking thank you. <laughs> it's terrible because the whole time you're just hearing. <laughs> the whole fucking time and then you get over it that was a great that was a great uh impression it's a lived but, experience so, so, but, but uh to talk about like sleeping in a car mm-hmm. um i have to tell you about um when I, I went to warp tour with like three friends when i was when i was younger we were like 16 or whatever mm-hmm. and or it was couch tour for zoomies oh, Jesus. and then it was the year CKY <laughs> played. And then it was, and then it was warp tour the following day. So nice. we did, we made a weekend of it, but we didn't, we're 16. We don't have a fucking place that we're going to stay. We drove down ourselves. And, but like the first night we are staying in a parking ramp in, in the, uh, like in the middle of fucking Minneapolis mm-hmm. as 16 year old kids and we just put blankets up in the windows and we're in the middle of this parking ramp. No one else is fucking parked in there. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, in the middle of the night, um, I'm barely asleep. We're all, I'm in, I'm with another dude in the back seat and our fucking boxers. Like I'm, I've got a blanket <laughs> over me and shit. And we, we hear a tap on the door and then a siren goes off and two cops are sitting outside with their guns drawn. Why? Um, be, because they, they said they were just double checking to see what was going on. Um, so they had their guns out uh, like, uh, like, but like a bomb thing or oh, just okay. to like, see what was, they couldn't see in the car. So they didn't know what was going on. Fair. And, but, but we're just but like, also shitty. But, but we're like teenage kids, not from the twin cities. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like sitting, sitting there in our boxers, like <laughs> hey, hey guys. we'll just leave. So we just went, to Walmart and passed out. Part, in their yeah, part, they, in their won't, they won't bother you at yeah, Walmart. Yeah, yeah, we should have we should have yeah, thought of that no uh, that, <laughs> to to begin with. Yeah, but no, uh, no way anything weird happens in a parking lot at three a.m. in Walmart. That was my ever. first like terrifying, yeah. um, uh, fucking 
uh, experience at a or in 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 the cities. I mean, it's, I it sounds like the, le- that's the most terrifying thing that happened to me in the in the yeah, cities. So as a kid, as a yeah, well, uh, you made it, and I'm I'm really proud of you for one year of sobriety and for you well, know. Thanks, thanks, buddy. Yeah, I'm 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 proud of that as well. Mm-hmm. I feel weird saying that I'm proud of that, but yeah, it's that's a, pretty big feat, and um, and I'm I'm stoked on it, and um, I'm just excited to move forward. Hell so. yeah, bro. Yeah. Or you mind if I read us out? Yeah, of course. Tight, 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 tight. Thank you so much for joining us. If you want to submit any questions or topics, head to bit.ly forward dash FFW grab bag uh, for more of that existential humor. Uh, please remember to rate and subscribe to Food for Worms on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast. You keep saying podcast enough, it kind of loses its meaning. You know what I mean? Anyway. What, um, what is a podcast? You always, <laughs> as always, check on your fr- your strong friends. Tell your people you love them and remember that you can't take any of this with you. So don't be a fucking dick. Give everybody, give somebody a hug. Consensually. This has been Food Forms. Allegedly. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Sam. I love you. I love you too, buddy. <laughs> Have a good night. No. I won't after that. <laughs>